Welcome to this uh, radio channel and um, I wanted to share a, uh, so there, there probably are others but the one I'm showing here is time and date, uh, basically the uh, sunset sunrise map uh, in real time. So this is real time where it's dark and where it's, you know, a, a daylight on earth. And for shortwave listening, this is an important thing because the day and the night time listening is not the same. Also, uh, knowing when the gray line is near your area. So gray line is that uh, area right here where the sun is setting at the moment. So the gray line is one of those periods of time where propagation conditions are at its peak. You know, I get a lot of questions about when's the best time to listen to shortwave and everything. So one of the first things that is useful to know, sunset and sunrise um, at different locations. Why? Because as a general rule, you know, lower frequencies propagate better at nighttime, higher frequencies in the daytime. But there's a mixed bag. You, will, you might listen in to a broadcast from an, a target area, from an area, and wonder why it fades out suddenly. For example, a great, great example we have right now is Radio Kuwait at 1800 UT. It usually comes in to North America, but everybody has been telling me after an hour it fades out. And that's because the nighttime is advancing over, you know, uh, the Arabian P Peninsula in Europe, and more and more darkness path creates between that signal on 15540, which is a high frequency, usually, usually propagating better in the daytime. And so as it's advancing, we're losing the signal that just can't propagate anymore up to North America. And that will tend to get better as we get closer to summer because the days will be longer. So there'll be more daylight path in June between Kuwait and North America, for example. So having a map of real time, you know, what it looks like, where's dark, where it's um, daytime is important for that, especially when signals are crossing the boundary between, you know, nighttime and daytime. And also remember that um, to have um, the, the maximum chance of getting some interesting stations, always remember that, you know, about a, a, an hour or two before sunrise to an hour or two after sunset, um, the same thing um, after sunrise, sorry, and, and two, or, uh, two hours before sunset to two hours after sunset, uh, you'll usually have a better propagation because of the gray line area, but also remember that, um, you know, evening and early mornings, there will probably be more stations that are targeting your area for you to listen to. So that's something that's very interesting and important to know. You know, uh, stations that target specific areas around the world will try to target them at times when they know you, uh, listeners will be in front of a radio. Midday is not a great time for that because usually people work uh, or mid, you know, in the middle of the night. But in the evening, early evening or local evening where you are, or early morning are times where you might be listening in because you might be either in the morning preparing to go to work or in the evening you got back home from work and you're you know you're in front of your radio so remember these properties of day night remember having a map a live map of when it's dark at a target area or an area you want to listen to and you know always kind of try to reflect upon okay I want to listen to this station that's broadcasting now is that frequency propagating to me? If you see that a station, say right now Australia is broadcasting on 17 megahertz, which is not because Radio Australia is gone, but say that you're listening to um, the um, the voice of the Great South Land, HEJB Australia. Um, of course, it's it's right smack in the middle of the night. That frequency will probably not be heard anywhere here. So. At the same time, with you know a, a more of a moderate frequency, 11 megahertz, for example, or 9 megahertz, might actually propagate through the nighttime here and make it somewhat to the daytime. You know, it's a very complex thing to understand propagation and if a signal will you know come from a, an area or not. And also, there's a huge influence by uh, solar activity. 
solar flux is a great indication of how high a frequency can propagate. So the higher the solar flux, of course, the more chances of a higher frequency making it, even if it's you know uh, dark where you are, is surprising. Uh, but you know, on a higher frequency, remember that above 15 megahertz, if you want to hear something, it has to be pretty much daylight path to the for the majority of that uh, region where the signal is propagating to you. It can be dark at your location. You know, for example, uh, here in the summer, uh, 11 p.m. is that time where I can listen to Radio New Zealand 15720. Why? It's a high frequency. Why can I hear it even though it's dark? I can hear it because there's the majority of the path from New Zealand all the way to North America is still in daylight. There's, so there's still propagation going on pretty well unto the majority and because of the late night, uh, the late sunset in the evening and the summer. Well, even here, 11 p.m. means that west coast of North America is still in sunshine. So that also helps me receive the signal. So, you know, it's something you got to adapt to. And I think uh, I'll post the link to this page. Maybe you have some other place that you can go to that you check this, but uh, very, very useful to know, you know, where it's dark and where it's uh, daylight at your listening location. If you enjoy my radio videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up, and thank you for watching.